Odds are at some point, your instructor has told you that you need to do some chair flying. So let's talk a little bit about how to properly chair fly a sortie. Chair flying is the biggest single activity that you can do to help learn the material, if you do it right. Otherwise, it could be the biggest single activity that you do simply to waste time. Typically, students make two serious mistakes when they try to chair fly. First one, they don't get down into the level of detail that either their mission or their experience level requires. And the second mistake is they don't consider the contingencies, the what ifs. What could happen on my sortie that I need to prepare for? Remember that cheer flying should be exactly like real flying, except you're not in the airplane or a simulator. Ideally, if you were to chair fly a sortie, it would take you an hour and 15 minutes to do just one run through. That's the level of detail, the motion, the pacing that we're trying to practice. But let's face it, when we chair fly, there are times that we can speed time up a little bit and get from point A to point B, as long as we're not overlooking any events or tasks that have to happen between those points. When we chair fly, we need to think about and simulate every little motion that we do, every stick movement, head movement, twist of a knob, push of a button, what are my uh, instruments going to be reading, all down to that level. In the very beginning, the first few times you chair fly, you may have to get down to individual muscle movement. How do I turn the airplane? Well, I have to use these muscles to push this rudder that much, then my arm to push the stick straight across to this place. But as your experience level increases, we, you won't need to get down to that minutia. Uh, you can just concentrate then on the newer things, the skills that you're just beginning to learn. You still do need occasionally to review that minutia or the skills that you have already attained. Otherwise, you will eventually lose those though. Think of your sortie with your instructor as being opening night of a Broadway play. How would you prepare for opening night if you were an actor? Well, first thing you have to do is you have to write the script. Who are the other actors? What are their names? What about the stage directions? Who's where? What direction are they facing? Who are they talking to? What are they trying to convey? What is the emotion of the scene? Of course, what words are they using? Who is saying exactly what word and, and who's going to reply with what answer? What are the actions and the reactions of people? Once they get the script, then they start the practicing. The first few times they practice, they will hold the script in their hand and they will read from it, just trying to memorize some lines, where they should be facing, some of the stage directions, the movements, etc. They may practice the scenes out of order, maybe concentrate on the more complicated scenes first, and they kind of jump around from place to place. Over time, the actors look at the screen or at the script less and less. If they get stuck, someone will toss them a line. They'll kind of start the line for them, just trying to jog their memory about what it is they're supposed to say. But they will redo that scene over and over again until they can get through it without needing anybody's help. Eventually, they'll put the, all of those scenes together and they'll start running through it in chronological order. And they repeat those rehearsals until the entire play comes together. Last thing they do is a full dress rehearsal. Beginning to end, no help, no breaks, no mistakes. If they have problems, they go back, they do the full thing all over again until they can get through it perfectly. Then they're ready for opening night. But realize, as they practice, there may be edits to the script. Somebody may 
decide there's a better way to do something or they want to change the meaning of something so they'll change the words they'll try various things until they find one that fits with what the director is trying to accomplish we do the same thing when we chair fly we need to do some research beforehand how do how do things work what am i trying to do uh, movie sets will consult a professional to ensure realism. We do the same thing. That professional that we talk to, our instructor. We write our script, we start practicing that script, and as we go through it, we may realize that we're missing something. We forgot a check. We realize that something's not going to fit the way we thought it would. So we can go back and we can revise that. Look things up if you don't know what it is. That's called mission planning, okay? Get into the regs, get into the dash one, the in-flight guide, the comm guide. Look things up and put them together. One thing that we can do in RIQ that helps a lot, take a piece of paper and draw out your profile. Then go through and label with all of your tasks, your checks, your headings, pitch and power settings, frequencies, when you're gonna start descents, all of those little details. Maybe you could even go through and put little notes, uh, a circled number every time you have a radio call. And then on a separate sheet of paper, using the squadron comm guide, write out what those radio calls are. That, those are the words now in your script. Here's an example of what that might look like. Something like this, leaving Randolph, flying out on the falls departure to area seven, doing some area work. We fence in, we fence out. We head over to Augur for the Augur Stinson. On the way over to Stinson, looks like we're trying to go to the VOR. What are those tasks we're trying to get done? Shoot our approach, climb out, come back to Randolph. So just an example. Of course, if you're worried about your drawings, you can always write not to scale down on the bottom. That way nobody can pick on you and say, oh, that's not how it actually looks. It's just something that is good enough for your use. It doesn't have to be a Van Gogh or a Rembrandt. Anyway, chair flying, it's repeated rehearsal. That's the key to learning. It helps us move the information, the actions, our plan from the short-term memory into our long-term memory. We have to do that. Now, there's no set number of practices, so don't let somebody tell you, you need to cheer fly this twice, or you need to cheer fly it six times. It depends. It depends on the person, it depends on the mission, it depends on your experience level. Do it however many times it takes to get it as perfect as you can in the time that you have available. And that's going to change as you gain experience. Now, you think you're done. You think you have it all memorized. You made it through the cheer flying finally. You got everything right, but you're not done. You need to do it one more time. Look at the contingencies, the external or the internal things that could go wrong. The weather could change. Uh, ATC could give you a change in your routing. There could be traffic. The person you called on the radio didn't answer because he was busy. And you have to call a second time. He doesn't give you the clearance that you expected. You asked for the alternate Stinson missed approach and he gave you the published Stinson missed approach. You wanted a high area, he gave you a low area. So think about some of those external things. How would you handle those? How would you change your profile? How could you catch back up and get yourself back where you wanna be in your script? Also think about those internal contingencies, the things that you might mess up yourself. You get task saturated, you forget to do things. Maybe you don't understand fully that procedure and what all needs to be done. You're trying to punch something into the GPS and you hit a wrong button. The cursor does something unexpected. How are you going to recover? You put in the wrong frequency or you don't know the frequency. Where can you find that? If you're not trimmed, you get off altitude. You'd need to calculate a new pitch or a power setting because he gave you 
and unexpected descent. Those are the contingencies you need to plan for. A lot of people think that there's such a thing as a perfect sortie, and there isn't. After 23 years, I can tell you there's no such thing. Here is an example, a graph of what we plan. It's nice, it's perfect, it's a pretty line. But here's reality. It's always a mess of things happening. But if I properly plan, prepare, and think of contingencies, I can come out the other end of that at the same place that I wanted to be anyway. So lastly, chair flying is an ongoing thing all the time for your entire career. Even crews that are mission ready still have to do some sort of mission planning. They still have to rehearse and review their profile, look over what they're doing, their comm plan, make sure that they know. Instructors, hey, we still review our slides and practice before we get up in front of the class and teach an academic class. A lot of the instructors will still sit around and think about, okay, with my sortie this afternoon, these are the things I want to emphasize, and here's how I think I'm going to help fix the issue that this student is having. So everybody chair flies. The only thing that changes is the level of detail as we get experience. Remember, always plan, always practice, and always be prepared for contingencies.